to the letter, this should be the place. Sorry, we don't serve the general public. I'm afraid you'll have to leave. Wait! We're not the general public! Well then, you must be a couple of wandering outlanders that snuck into the nation. <gasps> Are our clothes really so... Uh, oh, uh, what... Hmm, the Yashiro Commission's seal. This must be from Mr. Toma. In which case, welcome to the Komore Tea House, a safe haven for the Yashiro Commission. Well, that sounds more like it. Who forgot their promise? I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. What? Is that dog talking to us? <laughs> Relax. No need to look so surprised. I... Huh. So you didn't see anything like this when you were in Leo Harbor? Ah, now that you mention it, this does suddenly seem less out of the ordinary. <laughs> all right, all right. I've had my fun. Hey! You're this close to getting an ugly nickname, mister! <laughs> well, I've had some time to kill, given that I've been waiting here for you for so long, as was the case in Rito. So I came up with this little fun greeting for when you arrived. But in all seriousness, I would like to apologize about that little test you went through earlier. It helped us determine whether or not to bring you before Miss Kamisato, and whether you had the courage to face the lightning alongside us. Paimon's gonna forgive you just because you're getting all serious now. <laughs> Sorry, did I overdo it? My apologies. Let me just say this. You've often found yourself skirting the rules from the very beginning, haven't you? Naturally, this is due to your unwavering and resolute determination. A long time ago, we had a friend who was much the same. But when the lightning struck... Ah, so you've heard of his story. Hmm... His light still burns all the more brightly. Yes, of course. I will bring you to the Kamisato residence where the Yashiro Commission is located. But before that, there is one other place I was hoping you both would accompany me to. Oh? Where? I would like you to come with me to the statue of the Omnipresent God. It's still under construction now, but you can already see it from practically anywhere on Narukami Island. Visions. Visions? You mean all the visions that are collected from the Vision Hunt Decree are put into the statue? So you've already heard of the Vision Hunt Decree. Before I try to explain, I should perhaps remind you first that Mondstadt is the City of Freedom, and Leo is the City of Contracts. As for Inazuma, it's known as the Nation of Eternity. The Raiden Shogun is both the nation's most powerful ruler and its deity. The Eternity in question is her endless and unchanging will to rule over Inazuma. As such, she relies on the Tri Commission to regulate the nation's affairs and the Sokoku Decree to limit the people's movement. The Shogun wishes to keep Inazuma in stasis, allowing the stream of time to flow from one end to the other without disturbing it. Seems like every god has their own will. Of course, this is my own limited understanding. As for the reason behind the recent Vision Hunt Decree... 
Perhaps the Shogun believes that visions grant people the power to change, and that her eternity doesn't allow for such instability to exist. Whatever the case, the fact is that the Raiden Shogun has dispatched the Tenryo Commission to scour the nation for visions, embedding each one in this statue. And this statue of the omnipresent god can be seen as Inazuma's symbol of eternity. But if that's the case, wouldn't you say that the Raiden Shogun is being... oh, I don't know... selfish? <laughs> Only outlanders such as yourselves would ever dare speak out so directly against the Raiden Shogun. And yet, I agree. The Vision Hunt Decree is something that simply should not exist. And Miss Kamisato has been committed to fighting it since the day it was announced. Huh? Hey, are you okay? You look like you- Sound? What sound? I didn't hear anything. Did something happen? Yeah, you touched the statue, and then... And- Aspirations? Hmm. That would seem to confirm the saying. Have you heard it before? That when a person's ambition reaches a certain strength, the gods look upon them with favor. That is where visions come from. In other words, a person's vision represents their ambition. So if what you just said is true, then the ambitions of these people are stronger than I imagined. All right, time for the next stop on our tour of Narukami Island, the Kamisato residence. You can get away. Yeah. Right. You're toast. Midnight Phantasmagoria. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> I summon thee. Nice and spicy.
kind of place where the big shots of Inazuma live, huh? Hmm. Welcome, at last, to the Kamisato residence, honored guests. Miss Kamisato is delighted to finally meet you. Is this the Shirasage Himigimi you keep going on about? So, uh, where's she at? <clears throat> oh, uh, behind the screen? Yes. <laughs> As the daughter of the Yashiro Commission, this is how Miss Kamisato is accustomed to receiving guests. Consider it a time-honored tradition within the Yashiro Commission. Mm, makes sense. She's a super important person. Please forgive my lack of courtesy for receiving you in this fashion. Especially following such a long and wearisome journey over the sea. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. And Toma assures me that you do indeed possess the power to change the tide of the times. At present in Inazuma, in the name of the Vision Hunt Decree, the people's aspirations are being senselessly tra- Though the Yashiro Commission serves the Shogun, it is the people with whom we share close bonds, given the contact we are required to have with them in the performance of our duties. A Commission's power rises and falls with the trust of their people. Thus, we cannot remain indifferent to this situation without also remaining indifferent to our own fate. Traveler, lend us your power and we can- Oh. <sighs> See, milady, it's just like I said. This will take us nowhere. No, please! Wait! Please, don't go! <sighs> I will introduce you to the Raiden Shogun, on one condition. What are your wishes? They pertain to three whose visions were taken from them. Perhaps once you've met them, you will understand. A warrior who guards a village, a former samurai who helped carry out the vision hunt. Correct. Please do all you can to help them. I will. <laughs> then you have my gratitude. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do great. Let's see, what is the person Ayaka told us about? Why are you doing this? Why leave all of a sudden, after all these years? Precisely. It's much too sudden. We've had no time to prepare. The children are desperate for you to take them out to play. Please, we urge you to reconsider. That must be the guy Ayaka told us about. Let's go over and see. Ah, you must also be here to... Tejima has protected this place ever since keeping out the treasure hoarders. Fending off any monsters that draw near, resolving qu- But now, all of a sudden, we will gladly apologize if that's the case. <sighs> if you want my opinion, something to do with- It's clear that Tejima had done nothing wrong, and still they confiscated his vision. I can't claim to fully understand it. But I could tell that he'd lost something very important to him. Truth be told, we aren't sure whether trying to keep him here is the right thing to- Seems like he's a well-respected guy around here. You must be Tejima! So what's made you want to up and leave all of a sudden? Me? I... It's not a question of why I want to leave. True. But that's not why I chose to stay here. And what made me want to come here 30 years ago? And why have I never wanted to leave in all that time? I don't have answers to those questions because I can't remember anymore. Ever since they took my vision away, it's like... A slice of my memory is gone. 
In the past, I knew I wanted to stay here. But whatever resolve I had then, it's gone now. So I thought, what's to stop me from moving around instead? The emptiness inside me will be there either way. Okay. Well, in that case, if we help you rediscover the reason you chose to stay, you won't need to leave anymore, right? Hmm. But if you can't remember anything, it's not gonna be easy. Oh! Maybe if you just try a little harder to remember, then it'll... Oh, that reminds me. Last time I brought Tejima some fruit, I do believe I saw him writing in a diary. Mm, I keep a diary? If you say so. I honestly can't seem to remember. Oh, yes! Yes, you do! And what's more, I remember you saying at the time that you wanted to make a note of a few interesting things. Things which would prove very important at a later date. Perfect! So if we want to keep Tejima from leaving, we just need to find his diary! It must be around here somewhere. Let's take a look! If you don't mind, we will leave you to find the diary. We should head back to the village to inform the others of Tejima's situation. This looks like Tejima's diary, all right. Let's see what we have here. Today, the villagers and I got together to cook dry braised salted fish. I met today, I helped rescue a kid who had fallen in the water. After I pulled him out, he told me that his best... I went kite flying today. The string broke, so I chased after it as fast as I could. I soon realized I was... Hmm, seems like your average diary of daily village life. Huh? Wait, there's more! I went to pray at the shrine again today, and stayed there a while. The omamori you gave me has faded a little, but it is still my mo- Now that's the kind of info we're looking for! Time to pay a visit to the shrine! I wish it could be like this all the time. So this is the Omomori Tejima wrote about. Hmm, interesting. Looking at the color and the design, Paimon would have thought it belonged to a child. But anyway, if he had this with him all the time, there's a ch that Tejima visited a lot? The soil looks like it's been disturbed. Maybe Tejima buried something precious here. Must be something pretty amazing if it made him stick around for 30 years. Oh, it looks like a letter. Konda Village. Sounds so familiar. Where is that place again? Huh. So the reason Tejima came here was to wait for someone. But he's been here for 30 years! Oh, guess they didn't show up in the end. Well, let's go give Tejima his stuff back and take it from there. Well, I'll be... That's certainly my handwriting. 
have no memory of anything that's written in this diary. Still, it's clear that I was waiting for someone here, and that I chose to wait for 30 years. Over the years, I must have made a note of anything interesting, anything that I could share with her when we were finally reunited. <sighs> And just look at all the things that did happen over the years. The time has flown by so quickly. Thirty years feels like the blink of an eye. How could I have forgotten something so important to me? Love, regret, everything I felt for her, it's all disappeared. No, not especially. After all, I've forgotten who she was. Her face, her voice, the things we experienced together. It's as if she'd never been in my life to begin with. As if all these years have been nothing but a hazy dream. Mm, I think maybe not. If this is something I waited most of my life for, I suppose I should carry on waiting. Although, what if she were to turn up eventually, only to find I didn't remember so much as her name? When I think about it like that, I do feel a slight tinge of sadness in my heart. How curious. Why am I thinking like this when I don't even remember who she is? It's just like that feeling of emptiness. The feeling that something is... <sighs> I shall remain here. Kejima seems to be dealing... Okay. Seems it's just like Ayaka and Toma were saying. If you lose your vision, you lose all your hopes and dreams too. That certainly explains the state Tejima was in earlier. At least we were able to help him. Weren't we? <sighs> well... Let's go find the next person! According to Miss Kamisato, the second one who lost their vision is a samurai from the Tenryo Commission. Commission is directly controlled by the Shogun. They're the ones responsible for maintaining law and order in Inazuma, the ones actually enforcing the Vision Hunt Decree. But why would they take action against one of their own? Oh, Paimon doesn't get it! Huh? There seems to be some commotion over there. Let's go see what's happening! I'll ask one more time. Do you intend to withhold this month's emergency provisions? The entire clan is counting on that food! We demand an explanation! How many times do I have to say it? I don't know anything about emergency provisions! You dare deceive us? Those provisions are essential! Do you understand? Not some goods to be pocketed by greedy samurai! You samurai think you can just do whatever you please? The Tenryo Commission will hear of this! Oh, uh, huh? And who are you? One of Kurosawa's gang, no doubt. Uh, what? We just happened to be passing by! We heard the commotion and came to see what the matter was. I see. You seem to have come just at the right time. Perhaps you can help us settle this matter. This is Kurosawa. He's a samurai and a member of the Shogun's army. They issue emergency provisions to the area, and he's the one responsible for distribution. In the past, we'd simply ask him for provisions and everything would be delivered. Now, he suddenly refuses to give us anything. He's keeping the provisions for himself, I just know it! We'll starve without them! No one seems to care about us. We used to think Kurosawa was a kind man, but he's shown his true colors. He's the same as all the other samurai. 
It's no wonder all the visions have been confiscated. The Raiden Shogun doesn't need people like him helping her rule the nation. This must be one of the people Ayaka asked us to help. But why would she ever want us to help someone like him? Maybe we should talk to Kurosawa and see what he has to say. I've never even heard of these emergency provisions. I don't know whether it's rumors or whether they're trying to blackmail me. But either way, it's ridiculous. If I was hoarding supplies, would I still be the poor man I am today? My own family can barely get by as it is. No, if you'll excuse me, I've got other matters to attend to. And that's the first bit of truth I've heard all day. The Shogun's army told me that I was unworthy of my vision. And they said I was slacking off in my work. Apparently, I'd even disappointed the Raiden Shogun. And that's why they confiscated my vision. Well, that's strange. You were helping enforce the Vision Hunt Decree. Why would you be unworthy of your vision? To be perfectly honest, I don't seem to remember the details. All I know is that I would perform certain things every month. But I don't recall what they were. And it's not just that. I have this unsettling feeling. Like, like someone owes me something. Does it have to do with the missing emergency provisions? I didn't take any. Like I said, if I was taking them for myself, I wouldn't be going through such hard times right now. To top it all off, my house was just raided by treasure hoarders. Which is why I came here in the first place. I was chasing after them when I got held up by these two. If you don't believe me, go find the treasure hoarders yourself. If there were any emergency provisions to be had, they would have found them. Huh. He seems to be telling the truth. But we better confirm. Let's go round up those treasure hoarders and see what they have to say. We should be able to follow their tracks. They couldn't have gone too far. We really outdid ourselves this time. All those samurai houses packed with goods? <laughs> we really hit the jackpot. I mean, besides that one house. You haven't seen anything yet. There'll be a lot more where this came from. Today's just the beginning. I'll be leading you all on an epic journey of pillage and plunder that will go down in hoarder history. You demand, boss. These seem like the treasure hoarders we're after. Let's teach them a lesson! <laughs> Another test. Here we go! Hero? By royal decree! Boba, get them! <laughs> Picked the wrong pet subject. Yeah! Aw, uh, there goes all the mora. We worked hard to steal that, you know? Come on, boss. Think of something. <clears throat> Not bad, kid. You ever think of joining the treasure hoarders? We could use someone like you. Kurosawa. Oh, I remember. So he's the one who sent you after us, huh? <laughs> Just our luck. I knew we shouldn't have hit that place. So what did you see inside? Was it stuffed with food supplies? Food supplies? <laughs> you kidding? That place was a complete mess. All we found was a strange looking box. I didn't want anyone else to see it. 
so I was planning on opening it myself once we got back. But now that you've caught us, how about we make a deal? That little box for our freedom. You've got a deal! Now show us what's in the box! Huh? What the? Th there's nothing in here, but I owe- Yeah! A lot- And they all seem to be made out to the owner of a general goods store. We better talk to this Miss Aoi and get to the bottom of this. As for you guys, you're free to go. Just pray that our paths. Y yes, of course. So, we redeemed ourselves for some IOUs. Uh, does that mean we broke even? Shut it. Let's just get out of here. Welcome to Tsukumomono Groceries. We've got everything you need. Can I help you find something? Or perhaps, there's something you want to inquire about? Ah, so you're friends of Kurosawa, I take it? <laughs> perhaps you're here to pay off his debts. Whoa, whoa! Let's not get ahead of ourselves! We're just here to learn where they all came from. How did Kurosawa end up owing you so much money? Did he buy anything super expensive here? Let me think. Kurosawa would come regularly to purchase large quantities of foodstuffs. He'd always put the payment on his own account. However, the price of provisions began to skyrocket recently, and his salary was no longer enough to cover the cost. So, he started writing out IOUs to cover whatever he couldn't afford of the usual amount. So that's how he was getting those emergency provisions. But why did he have to purchase a usual amount? If the prices increased, couldn't he just buy less? Well, if you think about it, the citizens receiving the emergency provisions must have been carefully calculating how much they needed to sustain them each time. Kurosawa thought that it would be quite the disappointment for them if they found they didn't have enough, especially after such long and careful planning. So he deemed it necessary to take on the debt rather than let the people down. Wow. Kurosawa was purchasing all the emergency provisions at his own expense! And no one ever appreciated what he did. They just complained and held him accountable! People's attitudes will always reflect their circumstances. In the face of hardship, nobody cares to think twice. Uh, if you ask me, had Kurosawa told everyone the truth about the supplies from the start, then there wouldn't be such a severe backlash now. Of course, I'm sure there would still have been some unrest. What he was doing was truly a thankless deed. As for why he chose to spend his own money on emergency provision, If you're still curious, why don't you go ask him yourself? I see... That reminds me... It's most unfortunate. If he doesn't clear the debt on his name, he'll have no choice but to sell that sword that is so dear to him. Sword? What sword? Oh... Didn't he tell you? He possesses a very valuable blade. He's carried it for years now. I've asked him about its origins. He told me that it was a gift from his father, that it was too precious to sell. In hindsight, I regret that I never made an offer on it. Everything has its price, at least that's what I think. Why don't you ask him about the sword yourself? Perhaps- Oh, but before you go, if you- <laughs> But we didn't buy anything! <laughs> Information is all- Don't worry. I won't charge much for information about Kurosawa. Nothing we ever discussed was ex- At least we now know where the emergency provisions were coming from. Plus, we found out that Kurosawa has a priceless sword in his possession. Let's go talk to Kurosawa again, and- Where did... I 
I presented them with a choice. Either they left or I drew my sword. It turned out to be a real time saver, actually. Perhaps I should start using it more often. Did you manage to track down the treasure hoarders? That just about sums it up. It turns out that you really were distributing emergency provisions, but they were all purchased at your own expense. Strange. Is that really the kind of person I was? I don't really have any such recollection. Even after all you've told me, I still don't remember anything. Why was I purchasing emergency provisions for everyone? And why would I put myself in such a difficult situation? <sighs> I really don't understand. But I cannot deny that when I brandished my sword to scare those two away, I could sense that my body was somehow... And this sword was once wielded by my father. I remember once when I was young, I wanted to sneak out with the blade and show it off to the kids next door. My father ended up catching me in the act and scolded me severely. What did he say? <sighs> I can't seem to remember that either. It would seem that I forgot many important things when my vision was taken from me. So many memories gone. Forever. No matter how hard I try to remember. All I can remember now is my father telling me that this blade bore his life's creed. And said to me with this sword hey if you look carefully there seems to be some words engraved on the hilt can you recognize the words virtue and justice somehow those two words seem to explain everything now taking on seemingly endless debts to make others happy i guess that must have been my greatest ambition after all but what use are virtue and justice? I purchased the provisions for those in need. And look how things ended up. The Tenryo Commission seized my vision. And the very people I was so desperately trying to help refused to understand me. And the irony of all of it is, I somehow still felt sorry when threatening them with my blade. I'm incapable of being a good person. Yet, I'm equally unable to be bad. I... I don't know what to do with myself. Yet another troubled soul. When we get the chance, let's speak to Toma about Kurosawa's debt. The Yashiro Commission would surely help cover his expenses. In any case, we must never let him sell off that sword. Yeah. Seems like losing all ambition is a terrible experience. Fortunately for us, you don't have a vision. Let's go find the next poor soul. these parts. Hyman heard that he's the present-day master of Make Your Shisui Art. Sounds pretty impressive. This is his dojo. Luckily, there's some people around. Let's go talk to them. Nanako, don't worry. Since they will be fine. Those thugs that challenged the dojo were strong, but he fought them all off in the end, didn't he? Maybe, but I'm still worried about him. Things have gotten dangerous before in the past, but it's never shaken him. This time, though... <sighs> it's just because he's been possessed, that's all. Once the exorcism has taken place, he'll be right as rain in no time. Hey there! Did something happen? 
Who are you? I don't care whether you're trespassers or just here to harass us while Sensei is impaired. Get out of here immediately! Don't make me draw my blade, or you won't live to regret it! No! You got it so wrong! Um, we just came here to... Uh... Disciples? Uh, yep, yep! We've heard all about the mighty master of Mekyo Shisui art! It's the whole reason we came all this way! To seek him out and ask him to train us! But then we got here and overheard you talking about how he got... possessed or something? Hmm... From the way you're dressed, it doesn't look like you're from around here. Please, accept my apologies. We've had so many people trying to cause us trouble recently that we're on high alert. You haven't arrived at the best of times, I'm afraid. Since they got possessed recently, I see you are earnest in your pursuit. <sighs> okay, how about this? My fellow disciple Nanako and I will explain Sensei's situation to you in a little more detail. Then you can decide whether to stay or to leave. Sensei's name is Domon, a name I'm sure you've already heard. Though self-taught, he mastered the art of the sword to a high level. He then proceeded to defeat many other prominent sword masters, never losing a single fight. He once said that his goal was to become the best sword master in the world. And so, even while training us, he continued to hone his own art. His fervor truly inspired us, and we trained hard, determined to keep up with him. But then... Not long ago, Sensei had his vision taken away. He hasn't been the same since. He says the strangest things over and over. And he refuses to let us train. Junya and I have discussed it, and, and we both think that he's been possessed by an evil spirit. So we've asked the Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine to perform. But if I'm honest, I still have my doubts over whether he'll completely recover. The Grand Narukami Shrine? What's that? You haven't heard of it? It's the largest shrine on Narukami Island. The Head Shrine Maiden is reputed to have very close ties with the Almighty Shogun herself. Not that we'd have any means of involving the Head Shrine Maiden, of course. But even one of the ordinary Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine would have clear power and authority to perform an exorcism. So don't worry, Nanako. Sensei is going to be just fine. The exorcism will take place this evening. You're both more than welcome to come and watch if you're interested. So... Losing your vision can cause possession? I uh, guess we should come back this evening and see for ourselves. It's a good thing you didn't arrive any earlier. You would have had to witness Sensei in one of his fits of madness. Just now, when Nanako was attending to him, she heard him whispering a few names to himself. When she asked him who the people were, he suddenly looked panic-stricken and pushed her away. It looked like he was in great distress. He was covering his ears and looking frantically around him with bloodshot eyes. All the while he kept calling those names, some of them we knew. Others we didn't recognize, but they all seemed to be the names of sword masters he had defeated in the past. One of them was Anzai. He used to be a fellow disciple of Sensei's, his senior in fact. But Sensei defeated him in a duel many years ago, and he has been a wanderer ever since. Sensei wouldn't stop calling his name. <sighs> Thankfully the Shrine Men has managed to subdue him. So the exorcism can finally continue. The ritual has now begun. All we can do is patiently await the result. Here's hoping Sensei will be back to his normal self very soon. 
Please, excuse me for a moment while I fetch some water. If he wakes up, he is sure to be thirsty. did you catch up with me so quickly? Are you sure you're Dolmon's disciples? You move even quicker than he does. Unless, I guess it's been a few years. Maybe his skills have improved again. Um, excuse me! We're the ones asking the questions here! First off, who are you? And what are you doing sneaking around these parts? Hmm? You seem like bad news, mister! Bad news? <laughs> I'll have you know I trained side by side with Domon back in the day. Long before you ever showed up. I don't care to talk about that time anymore. But if you must know, I am Domon's senior. His senior? Wait, that means you must be... Anzai, yes, that's me. Because I don't wish to see Dolmon or anyone else associated with him ever again. When we were young, we trained under the same sword master, studying Make Yoshi Sui art together. I had begun training five years before him, and everyone looked up to me as a steady and dependable older disciple. Practitioners of Make Yoshi Sui art seek to achieve stillness of mind, freedom from all agitation. So the majority of disciples are indifferent to rank and reward. I was no exception. But Domon was different. The first thing he did when he joined was go straight to our sensei and ask him, with a beaming smile on his face, how to become the best in the world. Sensei scolded him and told him that the art of the sword should not be used for such vain ends. Sensei said that coveting the title of the best sword master, barely days into his training, showed that he had a fickle mind, and that this would impede him from ever mastering the blade. I thought so too at the time, but Dolmon began making swift progress in his training and even started catching up with me. Only then did I realize that it was Domon who had long since freed his mind from all agitation. He was consumed by his singular desire to become the best in the world. He sought nothing less than perfection in the art of the sword, and nothing could deter him from this goal, no matter what stood in his way. Sure sounds like he meant business. So how come you don't want to ever see him again? Because until he arrived, I was convinced that I would succeed our sensei as the master of Mekyo Shisui art. Of all the disciples, I was the most gifted. I had trained the longest. Everyone had high expectations for me. Dolmon's arrival changed everything. When we sparred, I lost not just the match, but my pride and my status too. I fled the dojo that day and never looked back. Later, I heard that he sparred with Sensei, too. Sensei was advanced in years by then, and unfortunately that match used up every last ounce of energy in his body. After that I wanted nothing further to do with him. Deep down, though, I still respected his mastery of the blade, and his commitment to the art of the sword. So, when I heard rumors that he had lost his mind, my first reaction was to dismiss them as false. How could he, of all people, have lost his mind? His mind was the sharpest of them all, 
He had practiced make Yoshisui art to perfection. I decided to quietly come and see if it were true. Then, to my complete astonishment, I heard him call my... So you see, I came here not to cause him any harm. I just wanted to see for myself. Okay, you've heard my story. You should get back now. The exorcism is probably finished. Hmm. Seems like we got it wrong this time. He wasn't here to mess up the exorcism at all. Still, Paimon's not sure we should bring him back with us. Uh, let's go... You're saying he isn't possessed? Does that mean that he's just lost his mind? But how is that possible? No, no, I refuse to believe it. Something's clearly wrong. Nanako, please, try not to get agitated. I am sorry. With what powers I have, I can find no sign of any malignant spirit having possessed Domon. But spirits may take a myriad of forms in this world, many of which I cannot claim to have witnessed myself. Thus, I dare not rule out possession with complete certainty. And all is certainly not lost, for I received word not long ago that Lady Yai has taken an interest in your sensei's case. L Lady Yai? Is that the same Lady Yai that I think you mean? The head shrine maiden of the Grand Narukami Shrine? That's wonderful news! Then Sensei will be sure to recover. Correct. Lady Yai is most knowledgeable indeed, and has abundant experience in the exorcism of evil spirits and aversion of great calamities. I am unable to say for certain whether an evil spirit has possessed your Sensei, but Lady Yai can give a conclusive verdict. Excuse me, Miss Inagi, but I must ask, should we prepare a greeting gift for Lady Yai? That won't be necessary. All that is required of you is your timely arrival at the Grand Narukami Shrine. Lady Yai does not like to be kept waiting. I must leave now, but we will meet soon at the shrine. I wish Domon a full and speedy recovery. Who'd have thought Lady Yai herself would have taken notice of our Sensei's case? Do you mean to say that Sensei isn't renowned enough to deserve Lady Yai's attention? No, no! That's not what I meant at all! You misunderstand me! I just mean this is Lady Yai, the head shrine maiden. She has direct and close contact with the almighty Shogun herself. Um. Anyway, you should join us too, tomorrow. Given that you've traveled all this way just to meet our Sensei, we, the disciples of Mikio Shisui Art, would do our best to help you. Sure! After all, everyone seems pretty excited about Lady Yai. We're curious to meet her too. Who knows? Maybe we'll be able to find out a thing or two about the Raiden Chokun from her.